today we're talking about how to shrink belly and thigh fat after 50. Hey, welcome to my channel. If you're new to me, I'm Sophie Giuliano. Welcome to my kitchen. And it's great to have you here. Um, come and join me uh, every, every week uh, where I deliver information tips, inspiration uh, to, to help you to get healthier and happier and stronger and leaner, particularly as time goes on. So this is going to be a relatively short video because it is not rocket science. It's actually really simple what I'm going to teach you today. So four important, simple tips and, and pieces of information more so that you need to know to be able to go forth from today as a woman who is perhaps struggling with that spread, that middle age spread, that belly fat that you're suddenly like, oh my gosh, what is happening here or the thighs or whatever. And, and I want to help you as a nutritionist, as a health coach. I know I can help you. So let's get started with tip number one eat the right kinds of fats. Now this is where it is not rocket science. First off, we need to minimize the fat and oil in our diet period because per, um, per calorie per gram fat has significantly more calories than any other food group. And that's whether it's a fat, a loyal, a oil, whether you're talking about olive oil or, or lard, it just does. So I'm all for a very low oil, if not oil free diet. But before you throw your hands up in disgust, go, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Let me briefly explain. So when I say eat the right kinds of fats, what I mean by this is that there are a number of different kinds of dietary fats. So to break it down into two very simple groups for you, there are saturated fats and there are non-saturated fats in the form of monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. Now, here's what you really need to know about how this relates to burning fat and particularly this belly and this thigh fat as we get older because as we get older, things change. When we go through menopause, things change dramatically. And that's when we really need to start making these adjustments in our diet. So saturated fat, and this is almost exclusively, exclusively from animal and dairy sources, from meat and dairy. Um, and, and also there's one exception in the plant kingdom, which is coconut oil, which is not a health food. It is also a saturated fat. But for the most part, saturated fats contain palmitic acid. Okay, so remember, palmitic acid. And the uh, plant, the healthy plant oils, the healthy fats, if you like, from nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives, contain oleic acid, okay? Oleic acid burns faster um, as a fat. The fat, the fats with oleic acid burn considerably faster than those fats that contain palmitic acid. So to make that very simple for you, if you eat saturated fat, it doesn't burn as quickly as healthy fats. So healthy fats are, let's just go over those one more time, because we need fat in our diet. We need it for all of our physiological processes. Of course we need it. But healthy fats are whole foods. So healthy fats are going to be nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives, all of which are fully intact foods that contain fiber. That makes them a whole food, not a processed food. So I say to all of my clients, please fill your plate with these healthy fats. Now, do we go crazy and eat tons of avocados and bunches of nuts? No, of course we don't. There's, there's um, direction within that. 
Um, for instance, you know, a uh, third of an avocado uh, per day, a medium avocado, is a healthy serving of an avocado. One ounce of nuts a day is a healthy amount of nuts to eat. Seeds go wild. You can have as many seeds as you want. The healthiest food on earth. But you see, from these sources, you're going to get your essential fatty acids. And they're called essential because you can't make that, your body doesn't make them. You have to get them from your diet. So by eating the seeds primarily, flax seed and all the seeds, you're going to be getting all those really healthy omegas. So if I could leave you with one thing, even if you don't watch the rest of this video, but please do because there's really important information in this video, but even if you don't, if you were to make that one change today and say, okay, from now on, I am done with saturated fats. And that means that all dairy goes and all meat goes um, and coconut oil, you know, eaten very much in moderation or just get rid of it altogether. You are going to see a huge difference. Literally, you're going to see belly shrinking, uh, waist shrinking and thighs shrinking. So it, that's the most important takeaway that I want for you to take away today. And I will just say on a side note that all the kind of very trendy diets of today that have you eating all these saturated fats with the idea that you're going to rapidly lose this weight. Well, you might rapidly lose weight, but the weight that you're losing is water and muscle. Okay. You're not losing fat. You're losing lean muscle mass on those diets. And so you don't want to lose lean muscle mass and the water. So seeing the big number on the scale suddenly go down might be, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This is amazing. But it's not what you want. This video is for you to be able to address this belly fat, which also might indicate that you have visceral fat deep within your abdomen around your organs, which is dangerous and really puts you at much higher risk for heart disease. So this is what we want to get rid of. This is where we want to move the needle, both aesthetically, but also from a health perspective. Number two, get rid of all sugars and processed foods. Now, this might sound really obvious and obviously it ain't the first time you've heard it. There isn't really any healthy diet on earth that isn't telling you that you need to get rid of sugars and that's every form of sugar. I don't care if it's agave, if it's honey, if it's some of the sort of healthier um, sugars, any sugar that spikes your blood sugar, that takes your blood sugar up has to go. Okay, so sugars that don't, non-caloric sweeteners like stevia or monk fruit in moderation, that's a whole nother video. But we need to get rid of all those sugars. And of course, processed foods are sugars. They're just the same. So all of your processed foods, whether it's a processed flour, a white flour, white, white bread, white pastries, what, anything that you find in the counter of a coffee shop, you know, you walk in and you're hungry and you're like, oh my God, all those scones and everything looks so delicious. It's sugar. And of course, then you have that with a great big latte with syrup in it as well. And then you've got a sugar bomb that is insane. No wonder it's hard to see that belly fat and that thigh fat shrinking because you're not giving your body a chance, okay? So those absolutely have to go. That's a given, again, not rocket science, but I just wanna make sure that I'm covering all my bases for you. Number three is get your adrenals checked out. So one um, symptom, of adrenal burnout or adrenal fatigue. These are these little um, glands that sit just atop your kidneys. And if you are super duper stressed out, like really stressed, flying by the seat of your pants, exhausted, can't drag yourself out of bed in the morning, crash at night, you're so exhausted, crash in the afternoon, need to reach for a lot of caffeine, need to reach for those sugary snacks because you're just so exhausted. It's very, and, and thirsty. Thirst is another indication that your adrenals are burned out. If you have adrenal burnout, 
is very important to know because one of the symptoms is increased belly fat, very specifically belly fat. And the difficulty is that if you're not addressing that piece of the puzzle, then it's going to be harder, even if you do the other points that I've shown you, it is going to be tougher to really shift that, that belly fat. Um, so I'm not a doctor and I'm not an endocrinologist. I do have other videos to check out very specifically on adrenal fatigue and uh, where I interview an extremely um, uh, respected functional doctor. So please check out that video if you're sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I really think after what she said, I have adrenal fatigue. And number four is resistance training. So again, I like to stick to the science. So I am a complete science nerd and I read study upon study upon study. I look, like to look at the evidence-based study to sort of see what the proof is, everything that's current today. And one thing that really interested me was this. So there are two different kinds of fat that we're talking about with both belly fat and thigh fat. So there is sub subcutaneous fat, and that is the fat that sits on the, almost like just under your skin. It's the kind of little chubby fat, and you can get subcutaneous fat all over your body, on your arms and your legs. But we tend to get a little bit more, particularly as women, uh, as we age, on our belly and on our thighs. That is subcutaneous fat. And then there is, as I've just mentioned, the visceral fat, which is the fat which is a little bit more worrisome because you can't actually see it. It may present as a little bit of belly fat, um, and often you can tell if there's some visceral fat going on if your waist to height ratio is off. And what that means is that when you measure your waist, the circumference of your waist, it should be less than half your height in inches. So that's, you can tell, if you're more than that, then it's very, very likely that you're carrying this, this visceral fat, which puts you at significantly higher risk for heart disease and various cancers. So we really need to get rid of that. So resistance training is very important. High intensity interval training is what I recommend for every woman over the age of 45, because as we get older, everything slows down. We get sarcopenia, which means that we lose lean muscle mass anyway, which is annoying, we just do. Uh, obviously, we're gonna get weak and brittle bones and, and sort of everything, digestion isn't once what it was. So listen to me on this. 45 and over, you've got to double down. The resistance training that you were doing in the gym, in your classes, at home, whatever, that you were doing when you were 35, you now need to do double that to maintain lean muscle mass and to deal with belly fat and thigh fat. Turn your body into a fat burning machine by engaging, by performing resistance training that could be weights, it could be Pilates, it could be resistance bands, it could be running, that's resistance training. Anything that your body is resisting against the, the sidewalk or a weight or a wall or the floor, you're basically creating strong bones, but you are going to turn your body um, into a fat burning machine while you sleep. So just doing a little bit of cardio, some gentle walking every single day. Walking's lovely, walking's incredibly healthy, very therapeutic mentally as well, but it's not going to move the needle. It just isn't. And finally, it's interesting to me because there was a study done on uh, resistance training. Is resistance training better to remove you know, uh, subcutaneous fat and visceral fat? Um, is it just resistance training? Is it just diet or is it both? And the really interesting thing was that as far as your subcutaneous fat is concerned, you need to uh, do diet, which is just what I have outlined for you, low fat, um, but I'm going to give you one little caveat in a second, uh, oil-free uh, getting rid of all the saturated fats and getting rid of sugars and processed foods um, and resistance training. That is going to move the needle on the subcutaneous fat, but the visceral fat 
is almost entirely the, the changes that have been seen in these intensive studies is through diet alone. So that is really, really, really important. And the little thing that I was like, oh, I've got to tell you this because I forgot to put it in the little section about fats is fat free and low fat foods are not healthy. So you can go into the store and get those snack well cookies or brownies and they say they're fat free or low fat, but they put so much sugar in those guys that it completely negates it being a healthy food. So please do not believe the label. When you see something saying low fat or fat free, run a mile because they put a lot of other stuff in that food to make it palatable. Oil free means we're just getting rid of those oils as much as we can from our diet and we do, and I've got plenty of videos so you can check them out on oil free cooking and uh, you know an oil free diet. So do check that out and ultimately, if you were to choose one of the four tools that I've given you today, or the four tips I've given you today, hit number one. Nix the saturated fats and watch the belly, the waist, and the thighs shrink. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions or comments. And um, if you like this video, and if you like uh, videos pertaining to nutrition, check out some of my others. I'll see you next time.